there each and every one of you thank you so much for tuning in this is tony henderson mayor's television radio relationship expert author and entrepreneur i'm known as wise courtship all over social media because of my book with a three-step system it will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest and um, this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. And we come on to encourage one another, to go over the scriptures, and of course, to pray for your concerns. And so um, while people are still coming on, make sure if you are following me or watching me via Periscope, you push right down here. Yeah. Uh-huh. And put the uh, share or tweet it out uh, on Twitter, or you can tweet it. You can, you can send it to all your followers. I'm acting like I don't know what. <laughs> I got a lot of technology stuff going on around me. You can share with all of your followers and you can also put it on Facebook. Now, if you are on Facebook, you could touch down here mm -hmm, and you can share it on your timeline. You can have a watch party or you can invite individual people into the broadcast. And so if you're watching me via Twitter, what's up? If you're watching me on my website, how you doing? Good to see you. And of course, we will see you over there on YouTube as well. So let's see who is inside already. It's so good to see each and every one of you. So I pray that all of you guys are doing well. So make sure you greet me so that I can greet you too. I'm sorry, I kind of stripped the mic right here. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to, um, we're going to get ready to get into the word, but I just want to make sure, um, one, that I'm broadcasting okay. Good to see you, Tracy. How are you? Good to see you. Tracy's watching us via uh, Facebook. And I see Intercessor. Good evening. You're watching us in the evening. So that means you're watching us around the world. Guys, let me know where you are viewing us from. Let me know where you're viewing us from. And uh, so I don't have to look that up because I see that you guys are in the house. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started while you're putting that there and letting me know where you are watching around the world. We're going to go to... Uh, let me put up the scripture for you so you'll have that. We're going to be reading from Psalm. And we're going to be reading Psalm 46, 1 through 3. Okay. Psalm 46, 1 through 3. I pray that each and every one of you are well on today. Wow. Oh, Philadelphia is in the house. Good to see you, Elizabeth. I'm going to greet the rest of you after I read this scripture. We're reading Psalm 46, 1 through 3, the New International uh, version. And it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. And I'm going to focus on verse one, of course, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. That's what we're going to be reading from on today. And um, our topic for today that we're going to focus on is help me God. <laughs> help me God. But before we do that, I want to make sure I go ahead and greet uh, those who are coming in. Good to see you, Elizabeth. You guys let me know where you're viewing from. Yeah, intercessor. Sometimes the screen does freeze on Periscope. Uh, so if you can get over to Facebook, that'd be great. Um, I'm under Tony Henderson Mayors and I do have it on public. 
so that you can view it um, effortlessly there. So good to see you from Philadelphia. Good to see you. North New Jersey, Brick City is in the house. And um, good to see you, Lakeisha Mosley from the Lakeisha Mosley Show. Good to see you, darling. Good to see you. So let's go back to our lesson. Let's go back to our lesson. And I just read Psalm 46, 1 through 3. And it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. And so I just love this scripture. Um, just love so much of God's word because it is so encouraging and it helps us practically get through life. So we're looking here um, and we're in the New International Version. And today we're going to talk about help me God. And in this scripture, in this Psalm, we see um, it says, God is our refuge and strength. Listen, whenever you are going through trials and tribulations, whenever you're going through circumstances and conditions, things that you think you cannot handle or you can handle, whenever you're going through things in life, let me tell you, dear one, let me tell you that you need to trust God. You need to ask God for help. It doesn't matter if it seems like it's something minute, something small, something insignificant. You still need to go to God for help. But certainly, somebody put certainly in the chat box. Certainly when it's something that seems like you cannot handle, when it seems like people um, who have their back against you, uh, they turn their back against you, when it seems like you have your own back up against the wall, that you are to go to God in prayer and tell him all about it. And, you know, sometimes people, you know, they we use that loosely. We use that loosely. I'm going to pray for you. Thoughts and prayers and all of that when people pass away and uh, uh, also just giving um, give, giving recognition to the John Lewis family. You know, we are just uh, mourning, but we had him for 80 years, but, you know, he's just been such an awesome man um, and man of God. Uh, that, you know, you hate to see people who have contributed so much to the world. You hate to see them go. And so we're praying for his family and all of us as we go through this time. So certainly, somebody say certainly, <laughs> certainly when you are going through trials and tribulations, things that you feel like you cannot handle, things that you feel like, you know, is are out of your control, out of your, uh, your skill set, you need to turn to God in prayer. And all prayer is, is just talking to God. And, you know, some people we use that we use it so loosely. My thoughts and prayers are with you and I'm going to pray for that. And uh, we just got to keep them in prayer. But I think some people have forgotten that prayer can go places that no man can go. Even when you have a loved one sick with COVID-19 and they are in the hospital alone, prayer can go there. Oh, my gosh. And I'm a witness that prayer works under a lot of circumstances in the courtroom, in on, on your sick bed, on your deathbed, uh, when you have someone who a wayward child, when you having problems in your marriage, it doesn't matter. You got your money is acting funny. Prayer, uh, when you pray to God, God can hear you. The word of God said this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his trouble. So I'm here to tell you that prayer works. Somebody needs to put prayer works in the chat box. I don't care if you're watching me on the replay. If you agree with that, put prayer works in the chat box, because I'm telling you, somebody may be watching this and this, this may be the only thing they hear. And by the way, by the way, if you have not shared this broadcast, touch right down there, and go ahead and share it because we share a lot of stuff. People falling down the stairs, people falling into a fountain, folks smacking one another, people of police brutality. We show burnings. I mean, in my inbox, I get so much that people share. Some of it's so negative. And I'm like, why would you want to share this negative stuff on a regular basis? I just keep clicking and keep going. But if, can we get somebody to share this word? Can we get somebody to share this word, that prayer 
works. Oh my God. Can we get anybody to do that? Can we get the redeemed of the Lord to say so that when they ask God for something, he came to their rescue when they really needed him, he came. And listen, the old people used to say he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. I can say amen to that. I also know that sometimes you want things to go your way. Oh my God. But God's way is better than man's way. I'll say that again. God's way is better than man's way. You may think you know what you want, but I'm telling you, and you can be grown and sexy. Y'all not hearing me on today. You can be grown, honey, and super grown. You know how we like to say that. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown woman. And we grown and all of this and still don't know what we want. Oh my gosh. Whew. I feel that right there. Prayer works. And God will be an, a, Jesus will be an intercessor for you because a lot of times we don't pray as we ought. That's what the Bible says. We don't pray as we ought. We ask amiss. We hear there and everywhere, you know? And so sometimes Jesus has to inter, intervene and intercess for us. He's got to, he's got to translate that prayer. And sometimes we pray for something so fervently. We swear we want that. We swear we want it. Oh my gosh, I want that. I want that. And God said, you don't want that because I know you better than you. And when you get that, you're going to be bored with it. When you get that, it's going to hurt you. When you get that, it's going to block you. When you get that, it's going to stop you. When you get that, it's not even going to be compatible to you. And so if you just wait on God, somebody put wait on God. If Thank you so much for sharing, Tracy. If you just wait on God, and you asked him to help you. Now I get to the point now. This is the title of our lesson, just in case you don't know what it is. The title of our lesson is Help Me God. And you know, so when I was talking about this earlier, I know it was amusing to somebody when they heard the title, Help Me God. You know, you just start thinking of all kinds of thoughts when you hear that. Maybe the old saint saying it, or maybe uh, it just seems too simplistic. But let me tell you, the most effective prayer that I've ever prayed Y'all not listening to me. The most effective prayer that I've ever prayed was not, oh God, who the God of the universe, who stepped out onto a platform of nothing and spoke worlds into existence. That was not my most effective prayer. My most effective prayer was when I said, help me, God. <laughs> And sometimes I just say help because God knew I was calling on him. Anybody pray that prayer? Sometimes that's the prayer you got to pray. Help me, God. And that's the prayer that will change things. Not all that pre-planning and all that figuring out on a mathematical scale how you want things to work out because your way is not God's way. Somebody say amen to that. And thank you, God. Your man, God's ways is, are not like man's ways. He is not like the son of man who needs to repent. God does not change. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And he has the foresight and the vision to see far ahead than what we can see. Oh, my gosh. How many of y'all had plans for 2020? Oh, yeah, God. In 2020, we're going to do this. Oh, yeah, God. In 2020, I'm going to get that. Oh, yeah, God. In 2020, I'm going to do this. You hollered and hooped and rolled all over the church floor, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. But God knew there was going to be a pandemic. Y'all not helping me today. Is anybody going to help me today? Is anybody going to share this broadcast? Because this right here is a good word. Because see, sometimes we are so hepped up on what we want and what we think is right. But we can't see far past our nose. But God can see into eternity. He can see into time. And he saw this pandemic coming. And he said, you won't be doing nothing but sheltering in place. <laughs> He said, "You, this is going to be a planning season. This is going to be a preparation season. This is going to be a season for you to take to go to that virtual conference that Tony has called an opportunity. It's going to be a time for you to seize your opportunities, to work on your opportunities. If you don't, if you if you remember." 
one of the first messages I gave of this year. I said, God is going to, I said, when we talked about 2020, he's going to give us a vision plan and he's going to show us what it is he has for us to do. He's going to make it clear. He's going to make it clear. And I believe part of this being sheltered in place is making it clear to us what it is he has for us to do. And so it's up to you now. Somebody say it's up to me. It's up to you now to walk in what it is he has for you to do. And so this scripture says, God is our refuge and our strength. It's not your mama. Listen, we, most of us, most of us have some wonderful mothers. Some of us, the mothers have gone on to glory. Some of us still have our mothers. Now we have some marvelous mothers. There's some people who watching me, their mothers weren't that great, but their grandmothers or their aunties were some beautiful people, or maybe it was their dad that spoke into their life and kept them on track and, and really worked with them. But even with all of that, beloved, even with all of that, they are not our refuge and strength. They can give us a certain amount of strength. They can give us a certain amount of refuge. They can cover us to a certain degree, but it is God. Somebody say it is God. It is God who gives them the strength. It is God who gives them the ability, the wisdom, the stamina, the ideas to keep you in line, to keep you covered. It is God who does that. It is not them themselves. And so God is our refuge and our strength. And so when you get into trouble, when you have things going on in your life that you feel like you cannot handle, or even things you feel like you can handle, you ought to go to God in prayer. Oh my gosh. You ought to, hey, Latanya, good to see you. I did not know you was in the house. Good to see you. You see, I need my hair done bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's my hairstyle is right there, y'all. And so God, listen, God is the one who does it all for you. And I, you know, so I think some of us had to go through this pandemic to realize it is God who is our source. Oh, your job is a resource. It's a good one. Your business is a resource. It's a good one. Your, 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 um, your, your, your talents and gifts that can be a resource, but without God, the source, none of it would be possible. Oh my gosh. Somebody put in the chat box. God is the source. And so God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. You know, sometimes when you get in trouble, you may call your best girlfriend or your best, your best uh, uh, friend and, and they your bestest. You can call them for anything. But when you really get in trouble, sometimes you can't get them on the phone, not because they don't want to answer, but maybe they at the Walmart or maybe they going through trouble themselves or maybe they just missed the telephone call. You try to call your mother. You can always hit her up for some extra dollars, but for some reason she doesn't have the money or maybe she's limited. In other words, man is limited. God is limitless. Man is limited, but God is limitless. In other words, he's an ever present help. He's always there. So whenever you pick up the phone, when meaning you talk to him in prayer, whenever you call his name, he will answer. And somebody said, well, he didn't answer me when I called because he may not be answering the way you want him to answer. He hears you. He always answers yes, no, or wait a minute. And as I always pray, when I say well, either one that he does, it's going to be better than what we expected. This is going back to saying we are man has uh, man makes plans, but God decides where we will go. Not because God is some mad scientist, but because God has the he has foresight. He knows what's coming up the road. Just like you didn't know this pandemic was going to be happening. Just because, just like you had already had plans. Lakeisha Mosley's on here and Lakeisha Mosley and LaDonna myself. We had planned to do a three state conference. We were going to travel to three different states doing an I Rise conference. And all the atten intentions were great. All of the plans were wonderful. But God said, no, you won't be doing anything because the pandemic is going to come and you're going to do a virtual conference called an opportunity. Oh my gosh. Wow. Not only did he change the way that, uh, what we're going to do, what we're going to say, he changed the way it's going to happen. He changed how it was going to happen, when it was going to happen. But guess what? It's better than what we've ever expected. 
He knows what's up the road. He knows what people need to hear. Maybe we thought, oh, well, we're going to we're going to minister to women and we're going to let them know that they can rise in God and all of this. But he knew that this pandemic would happen. And so now you've got to really minister to people and say he's been presenting you opportunities. I know it looks like you're losing everything. I know it looks like things are falling down by your side, but he has given you an opportunity. Wow. Somebody say, help me, God. That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about help me, God. And so God is an ever present help in trouble. No matter what trouble you go through, he's right there beside you. You may not see him, but he's there. And some of us have a problem with this concept right here. This is why I need you to share, because you probably got this, but I need you to share it with someone who may not. We have a problem with this concept because I can't see him, so he's not there. And if I don't see it, I don't believe it. And this is make-believe, and it's just as make-believe as Santa Claus. But you don't see the air the air, A-I-R. You don't see the air, but you believe it's there. Okay. When I stop like that, that's what I call a salah moment. We got to stop and think about that thing. You don't always see the air, but you know it's there. Every now and then you feel a breeze. And listen, we're told that we breathe air in and out. It keeps us alive. And we never really see it. On a cold day, we might get some evidence of it because we see little breath come out. On a hot day, we may feel a little breeze and get evidence of it. When it's really stirred up and the storms are raging, we may see it in a tornado (laughs) spinning around and knocking things all over the place. We see evidence of the air, but we don't really see it. Oh my gosh. And that's the same thing with God. Every now and then you'll see evidence of God. He'll make himself known through a breeze, uh, through, through a tornado, not necessarily the actual breeze or the actual tornado, but he manifests himself in other ways. You may hear him say something in your ear or audibly, or you may actually get an idea right after you prayed for direction. He gives you an idea. And it's, it's sad that sometimes we feel like we're just so smart that I came up with that idea. Didn't you not realize that's right. Or gravity. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just like gravity. We, 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 told about it. We know that as a law, but we don't necessarily see it. And listen, many of us feel like we come up with these ideas and all these different things ourselves, but you just got finished praying. You just didn't know what to do just a few moments ago. How do you realize, how do you, um, how do you rationalize that you went from dumb diddy dumb to all of a sudden, you know, everything? I tell you that God is still working. He's moving like that breath of air. He's moving like that breeze. When you don't know what to do and you pray and ask for direction and suddenly you have an idea, you have a thought. Somebody say, that is God. Oh my gosh. God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. We're not going to fear over that. We got a lot of that going on now where it's turbulence on every side. It seems like we can't get stable footing, but we're not going to fear because we know when we need help, somebody yell help. When we need help, when we say help me God, or we say help, we know that God is an ever present help in the time of trouble, that he hears us. When we say we're going to pray for somebody else, you better take that seriously because when you open up your mouth to pray for somebody, he can hear us. Sometimes he doesn't say anything right away, but he I'm telling you as a personal witness, he'll answer that prayer and then he'll sign it. What do I mean by he'll sign it? There are some things that you've never uttered to anybody else but God. You did not mumble it to it. Sometimes you didn't even say it out loud and he will let you know that he heard that. 
He will let you know that I'm, I love you just that much. I'm going to put that little extra bonus in there that I know you didn't even tell anybody else. Some things that you didn't even utter yourself, but you moaned and groaned. And I made sure that I signed it with love. Oh my gosh. And so therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, we're not going to fear even though things seem like they're out of control and they're spinning here and there. Even though we got Klansmen coming after us and police brutalities and fires here and protests there and rumors of wars and wars and threats of nuclear, nuclear uh, war, we will not fear. Somebody say we will not fear. We will not fear because we know that we can open up our mouths and we can ask God to help us. And even though he may not answer it the way that we want, we know it's going to be better. Somebody put better. It's going to be better than what we've ever expected. And so now, dear ones, we're going to get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. We're getting ready to go before the Lord in prayer. But before we do, I want to see if I have um, any prayer requests. And while I do that, while I'm looking for that, I want to show you something. And I don't think I can talk and do it at the same time. But y'all let me know. I want to show you a flyer here uh, for a moment. I wanted to show you that flyer. Let me know. Yeah, I want to show you that flyer, uh, an opportunity. And I want to put this link up here while we are getting ready to segue into prayer. I want to... Um, invite you to our virtual conference. Somebody say virtual. That means you can watch it from home online um, and take this conference. And it is called an opportunity because I believe that even though we're going through what we're going through, that God is still presenting opportunities. Some of you guys are really worried right now because your money is about to run out. You're really worried because you're not sure if you can get another job. And you're wondering what you should do next. And I believe the Lord is trying to present an opportunity to you. And so you need to be part of this uh, conference so that some words can be spoken over you. You can get some information. Uh, you can do all that I'm looking for. I'm looking for prayer requests at the same time. You can um, go through all of those things so you can be prepared for this opportunity. Because sometimes you, you may be um, sent so many opportunities. Somebody say so many. So many opportunities. And you know what? You miss them because you don't, you can't even recognize them. You don't recognize them at all because you have not been trained to have an eye for the opportunity. Sometimes you can recognize the opportunity, but you don't know what to do with the opportunity. So if you put that link in exactly the way you see it, bit.ly forward slash and opportunity 2020. That's A N O P P O R T U N I T Y 2020. B I T dot L Y forward slash and opportunity. If you go to that link and register right now, you can be part of that, um, that virtual conference. And, um, Go ahead and sign up because you know what? We've had a lot of people sign up already through the grace of God. We've had so many people sign up. Um, I'm going to get right to that in a minute, Elizabeth. Guys, you can put your prayer request up, but I will get to it um, as soon as I put the glasses back on, okay? <laughs> I'll get to it. So make sure you go ahead and sign up for that um, virtual conference. So many people have signed up already. Uh, which is confirmation that we should be teaching on this. And uh, Lakeisha Mosley, if you can put up three hearts, three red hearts, if you can. Uh, and anybody else um, who comes onto this broadcast, Lakeisha Mosley, Dr. Annette West, uh, LaDonna Marie, and Wendy Key are our speakers for an opportunity. And I'm telling you, you are going to be blessed. So let's get ready to pray. Let's get ready to pray. Let's go ahead and celebrate God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you. We lift you up. We magnify you. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. God, you are so worthy. 
Somebody know he's worthy. God, you are so worthy and we love you so much. And God, forgive us when we don't cry out to you as our help, knowing that you are waiting to help us and be there for us. Forgive us if we haven't turned to you. We turn to other people, to other situations and circumstances. God, we thank you. We confess all of our other sins, oh God, to you. And we thank you for being so kind and so loving. We thank you for taking care of us, even in this pandemic. We thank you, God, for keeping our, our health um, and our bodies strong. We thank you, oh God, for providing for us each and every day, oh God. Maybe slim for some of us. Sometimes it may seem like we might tilt over, God, but you just still keep providing. And we are so grateful. Anybody grateful on today? God, we just bless you and we honor you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for life, health, and strength. We thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. We thank you, oh God, for our families. And we thank you, oh God, for keeping us. We, we thank you, oh God, for just being there for us each and every day. God, we pray first of all for those who, um, those who lost loved ones in this pandemic, oh God, we pray for the, them and as they grieve, God, that you will comfort them, that you will use us to be a comfort to them as well, oh God. We pray for them um, as they have a missing loved one, oh God, that you will heal them in that area and that their pain will turn to smiles and pleasant memories, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for those who are struggling now in their health with COVID-19. God, heal their bodies, oh God, in the name of Jesus, from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. God, we pray for each and every one of the people who may be listening or those who are wherever they may be who are suffering financially. God, we pray provision over them, oh God. We pray for those who may feel nervous at this time, may feel like um, they're alone, God. We pray that they will realize that you are their help in a very present help in the time of trouble. God, we pray uh, for all of the businesses on this broadcast. God, we pray for all of, go ahead and put your prayer requests up at this time. We pray for all of the mothers and fathers on this broadcast. We pray for all those who um, had to shut their businesses down due, due to COVID-19, oh God. Touch them, oh God. Touch their businesses. Um, touch the, their families, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we also pray uh, for uh, Elizabeth um, as her job is being eliminated due, due, due to the pandemic. Uh, we know that she's been um, there for about 24 years, oh God. And so we are touching and agreeing with her. As she says, as one door closes, another one opens. And that we pray that God will guide you, guide her. God, so we know that you will guide her in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That you will amplify her skills and her abilities. And that you will move her into her next season. And you already know what's up the road for Elizabeth, oh God. So prepare her now so that she will be prepared to do what it is that you have her to do. Everyone who is uh, crying out for a job, everyone who's crying out for some sort of employment, God, touch God now in the name of Jesus, I pray. For every person who is hurting, for every person who's in need, for every person who's unsure and uncertain or fearful, I pray now, God, in the name of Jesus. Any other prayer requests? God, we ask that you pray for the Wise Courtship family. We ask that you pray for, we pray for um, not only the Wise Courtship family, but all the people who come in and listen to the broadcast uh, who may be hurting in their relationships, oh God. We pray for all of the people who stand in need. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we know that whatever your answer will be, whether yes, no, or wait a minute, it's going to be better than what we've ever expected. And so we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You know what? I got a whole lot of stuff going on <laughs> at the same time that I'm praying. I got a whole lot of stuff going on. But I do want to go ahead and give you a word of encouragement as we go out the door. This time goes by quick, doesn't it? That's amazing. And listen, I am I am going to be interviewing some of the ladies from an opportunity. Uh, we also are going to have our launch party. And it's my microphone. Keep moving up there. <laughs> We're also going to have a launch party. So I'm pulling up my phone so I can pull up 
the dates, okay? I want to share that with you before I give a word of encouragement. And let me get over here so I can see what you guys are saying. Hey, Sheila, good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, God is our source. Yes, indeed. Let me put a little comment up there before I go into my next thing. So let me see. Um, Don't go away, y'all. Don't go away because I want you to get this down. So write this down. July 23rd. July 23rd. The An Opportunity Conference will be launching. And we are going to, it's going to launch. Um, I'm trying to put the link up here for you too. Like I just had it up here. What's wrong with me? Okay. <laughs> uh, the An Opportunity Conference launches, okay, on July 23rd at 7 o'clock p.m. You could go ahead and register now. Okay, don't wait. Register now. And so many people have registered already. I want to thank you guys for that. And um, I'm just so excited. Uh, so that launches um, Thursday, um, July 23rd at 7 o'clock p.m. But at 6.30, somebody put 6.30 in the chat box. I'm coming on live here with some of the ladies from an opportunity conference as we, you know, launch it in almost like New Year's, okay? <laughs> We're going to launch in that conference. And if by chance, if by chance you miss it, it will be evergreen, okay? So you can always go to that link. You'll always be able to sign in and you will always be able to see the conference as long as the Lord allows, okay? So let's look at um, our calendar uh, for the week. On Monday, um, I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Annette um, West um, on Monday at two o'clock. I'll be back here at two o'clock on Monday, uh, this Monday on the 20th. And also Lakeisha Mosley, who's on here from the Lakeisha Mosley show. I'm going to be interviewing her Monday at seven. All right. And then um, Wendy Key. Woo! Wendy Key going to be here Tuesday, the 21st at two o'clock p.m. I'm going to be live here with Wendy Key. And Wednesday at seven o'clock p.m. I'm going to be live with LaDonna Marie. And I'm telling you, each one of these ladies are going to be amazing. Now, that's not the conference. That's not the conference. That's just giving you a chance to get to know them and what they do and what they bring to the table and how they serve people and uh, some of their products and services and different things like that. That's just going to be that. But then Thursday, we're going to have a launch party here at 630. OK, here at 630. And then the um, conference is going to launch at seven o'clock and it is going to be such an amazing time and you're not going to want to miss it. Okay. You're not going to want to miss it. So with that being said, okay. <laughs> with that being said, um, I just want to give you some words of encouragement. Today we talked about help me God, help me God. And we came out of Psalm 46, one through three. We talked about God being an ever present help in the time of trouble. And so I want to encourage you that even though you may be going through some things right now, it may be heavy. You may be looking at that mortgage like, oh my gosh, I don't know how we're going to do this. I'm not sure if we don't get out of this pandemic. You may be looking at the fact that you lost your job or, or, or uh, you had to sell off some things or maybe your health has not been the best or maybe you have a loved one who passed or who's dealing with this virus. You may be looking at a whole lot of things where the foundation, the very foundation seems to be shaking. You're looking at the political system and that's a mess. You're looking at the religious system and that seems to be a mess. And you're looking at uh, the social system and that seems to be the, a mess. But I'm telling you, if you put your hands in God, you will never have to worry about being on shaky ground. You will always be on solid ground. You may see things shaking around you, but you will always be on solid ground. Now, the only way, somebody put the only way, to really be connected with God is to believe in his son, Jesus Christ. And you've got to believe that first of all, Jesus is God's son. And then that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And that we do, sins means that we just do things wrong. You know, we don't always do things right. We are imperfect. And because we're imperfect, we need to talk to God. We need to say, God, you know, I made a mistake. Help me. I'm sorry. Okay. And so if you can believe all of that, if you can confess that out of your mouth, and if you can believe it in your heart, then you too will be saved. That means that, you know, you got a connection with God. You got it. Right? You, you know, his son, you can talk rights to him 
and he can help you get things right. You'll never be perfect, but with him, you can live the best life possible, okay? Because he is amazing and he is, as we taught, an ever uh, present help in the time of trouble. Absolutely, Lakeisha. And so listen, no matter what's going on in your life, it may seem like you can't handle it. It may seem like things are going awry and they'll never get back on even footing. Even when you're in a rocky time, a rocky place, when you have God in your life, it's like you're on a firm foundation because he is the foundation. Man is fickle. He'll change, you know, one day they feel this way and one day they don't feel that way. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Good to see you, RG Cam, and good to see you. Yes, he is. He's good all of the time. And so listen, I encourage you to stick right there in the faith. And I encourage you that when you are going through hard times to call on God because he hears you and he answers. He may not answer the way you want. He may not answer in the time you want, but whichever way he answers, you are going to be more than satisfied. As a matter of fact, you're going to be like, what was I thinking? This is way better. <laughs> than I ever thought it would be before. So listen, guys, I got to go. I got to go. This time just really, really flew by. But remember, you can visit me on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere. It's Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, that's right, we got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care.